Greetings, everyone. Huang Chen Unicorn here. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been following along with the video so far, and then I have a link in the description section below. That links to where you can download all the data files, so you can follow along with this. Okay. Just a kind of reminder: this course is meant for educational purpose only. The data and information pre presented in this video is not investment advice. Okay, and please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and click the bell icon on to receive the latest updates. Thank you. In this video, we will explore the distribution or model for stock returns and demonstrate how it can aid in identifying financial risk. Knowing the distribution of stock returns is critical in effective risk management. For instance, consider the case of Apple, whose stock price dropped over 40% from August 2012 to May 2013, roughly within a year. Such a significant loss would make it difficult for many people to bear, and uh, would cause great anguish. If we do not manage risk and make quantifiable predictions and risk valuations for the future before trading stocks, we are likely to suffer unnecessary loss due to stock price fluctuations. So, how can we achieve this? First, let us uh, begin by calculating log daily returns. Log daily return is a financial concept used to measure the percentage change in the price of an asset, such as a stock or a cryptocurrency, over a single day. It assumes returns are compounded continuously rather than a course sub-periods. It is calculated using the natural logarithm of the ratio of the closing price of the asset on the current day to its closing price on the previous day. Here we can see the formula for calculating the log data return, where PT is the closing price of the asset on the current day. PT-1 is the closing price of the asset on the previous day. Len is the natural logarithm. The advantage of using the log daily return is that it normalizes the data and makes it easier to compare the uh, returns of different assets. In addition, it has several other useful properties, such as uh, being additive over time periods and having a distribution that is closer to normal than the distribution on simple uh, than the distribution of simple returns. The log data return is commonly used in finance to calculate various statistics, such as the average daily return, the volatility of the asset, the black skulls model for option pricing, and the correlation between the returns of different assets. These statistics are important for investors because they allow them to assess the risk and potential returns of an investment and to construct diversified portfolios that minimize risk while maximizing uh, returns. Let's use the historic daily uh, stock data of Apple as an example. Suppose we want to calculate the log daily return of Apple for the trading day of March 11th, 2023. We can obtain the opening and closing price of Apple for that day from a financial data provider. For the sake of this example, let's say that the opening price of Apple on March 11th was 150 and the closing price was 155. And let's use the formula to calculate the log daily return of Apple on March 11th, 2023. And it was 3.28%. Uh, we can interpret this as a percentage change in the price of Apple over the single trading day. We can repeat this process for each trading day in the historic data of Apple to obtain a time series of log daily returns. 
This time series can be used to calculate various statistics, such as the average daily return, the volatility, the correlation with other assets. These statistics are useful for investors to make informed decisions about investing in Apple or constructing diversified portfolios that include Apple. To analyze the stock return of Apple, we can compute the log daily return, and the resulting histogram is bell-shaped and symmetric very similar to a normal distribution. Thus, we can model the daily stock return using a normal random variable that can take values from positive infinity to negative infinity, theoretically speaking, of course. And the parameters 0 and 1 in normal PDF correspond to the mean and the standard deviation of the normal random variable. Furthermore, the normal random variable used to model the daily stock return is also referred to as a standard normal random variable, and its distribution is known as the z-distribution. The z-distribution is a probability distribution that is frequently used in finance and other fields to describe the variability of a set of values. It is a specific type of normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. The graph of a z distrib, the graph of a z distribution is bell shaped and symmetric around the mean of zero. One of the main uses of the z distribution is to calculate the probability of a particular outcome occurring. This probability can be calculated by converting the value of interest to a standard score or or, or z-score using the formula here, where z is the z-score, x is the value of interest, mu mu is the mean of the distribution, and uh, sigma, sigma is the standard deviation of the distribution. Once the z-score is calculated, the probability of the outcome can be found using a z-table or a calculator that can perform z-transformations. With the help of SciPy, a scientific computation package for Python, we can obtain the density function and the cumulative distribution function for the normal distribution. Now. I must take some time to introduce the concept of cumulative distribution function. The CDF is a function that maps the probability of a random variable falling below a certain value. To understand this concept, let's use the example of rolling a die. When you roll a six-sided die, each face has a different value from one to six. The probability of rolling a certain value or lower depends on how many faces have values that are less than or equal to the target value. For example, the probability of rolling a 1 or lower is 1 6. Because there's only one face with a value of 1, the probability of rolling a 2 or lower is 2 6 or 1 third because there are two faces with value of one and two. As you increase the target value, the probability of rolling that value or lower increases as well. The CDF for for this die would be a step function that starts at zero for values below one, increases in increments for one six for each value from one to five and ends at one for a value of six. Okay? (laughs) Okay, so we can construct a cumulative distribution function for a random variable. A cumulative distribution function gives the probability that the random variable x 
is less than or equal to x. For every value x, in case of discrete random variables, the cumulative distribution function is the sum of the probabilities of all outcomes unto and including the specific outcome x. In short, CDF adds up the probability of occurrences cumulatively and will always start at zero and end at 100%. Okay, so and also the cumulative distribution function can be applied to both discrete random variable and continuous random variable. By changing the mean and variance of a normal random variable, we can generate different normal random, uh, we can generate different normal variables. Additionally, the CDF outputs the probability for the area and the lower side of each possible value, allowing us to analyze the probability of extreme events. On the left side of the screen, we can uh, we have a graph representing the normal density, which is symmetrical, uh, which is symmetric and bell-shaped with a mean and a symmetric center. By understanding the distribution of stock returns, we can better manage financial risk and make informed investment decisions. On the right side is the cumulative distribution function, which represents the probability that a stock returns takes on values greater than or equal to a given value of x. As x grows larger, the cumulative probability approaches 1. One way to model daily stock returns is to assume that they follow a normal distribution. However, we don't know the true mean and the standard deviation of this random variable. Instead, we rely on a large collection of historic data returns to estimate the mean and the standard deviation. Although these estimates are not identical to the parameters of a normal distribution, they are sufficiently close for example they are sufficiently they are sufficiently close. For example, here um, our goal is to find out the probability that the daily loss could exceed 5%. To do so, we plot the normal density curve for daily returns and calculate the pink area, which represents the probability of losing more than 5% in a single day. Using the cumulative distribution function, we obtain a probability of half percent. Therefore, we have a half percent chance of experiencing a, of experiencing a daily loss greater than 5%. Well, next, we turn to the question of how likely it is that the stock price of Apple would drop by over 40% in one year, which comprises 220 uh, trading days. Well, to model the yearly return, we assume that the daily returns are independent even though this is not strictly accurate. This simplifies the calculation of the mean and variance of the yearly return using formulas for the sum of variables. Since the daily returns are assumed to be independent, the variance of a unit return is equal to the sum of the variances of the 220 daily uh, returns. Without using the cumulative distribution function, we compute a probability of less than 2%, indicating that the, there is only a small chance of experiencing a yearly loss of more than 40%. So we can conclude that it is inconsistent with the stock's overall performance, which raises the question, about what happens in 2012 and 2013. In finance, there are various problems that require the use of distributions, such as finding quantile 
of a normal distribution for statistical testing in, finan in financial risk management. Value at risk, VAR, <laughs> is a statistical measure used to quantify the potential loss on an investment over a given time period. It estimates how much an investment portfolio or individual asset is likely to lose in a worst case scenario based on a specified level of probability. For example, the 5% quantile of daily return is known as the 95% VAR, which is obtained using the percent point function, PPF, for a normal distribution. Using PPF, we can calculate the 5% quantile to be a negative 0.03. Therefore, the 95% uh, VAR is negative 0.3, indicating that there is a 5% chance of experiencing a daily return worse than negative 3%. VAR is calculated using a variety of statistical techniques, such as, uh, such as historical simulation, uh, parametric modeling, and uh, Monte Carlo simulation. It is an important tool for risk management because it allows investors to quantify their exposure to potential losses and adjust their investment strategies accordingly. Despite the prevalence, uh, despite the uh, sorry, despite the prevalence of using normal distributions to model stock returns, Professor Eugene Fama and Kenneth French conducted extensive research on the distribution of stock returns and found that the distributions of daily and monthly stock returns are rather symmetric around their means, but have fatter tails than a normal distributions. This implies that outliers, both negative and positive, may occur more frequently than expected using a normal distribution. Or uh, in another word, this means that the likelihood of extreme positive or negative returns is higher than what a normal distribution would predict. This observation is important for investors because it, it, it implies that the risk of a portfolio is not accurately presented by a normal distribution. Instead, investors need to account for the potential for extreme losses when making investment decision, decisions. This can be done by using techniques such as VAR or by incorporating non-normal distributions into portfolio optimization models. To account for fat tails, some researchers have proposed using T-distribution with lower degrees of freedom. In the upcoming topics, we will discuss and use T-distributions to model stock returns. All right, that concludes our content for today. I really hope you guys got the hang of it. If you are feeling confused or frustrated about any of the code we showed in the program, please don't stress. I will go over the ins and outs of every line of code in the next episode. So we will get you up to speed in no time. And uh, if any of the financial theories or statistical concepts we talked about are still a bit of a mystery to you, just drop me a comment. I am more than happy to give you some extra context or extra uh, examples to help you out. And uh, oh, and speaking of comments, I'm always open to your feedback and suggestions. So. If you have got any thoughts on how we can make this, how we can make this show even better, please don't be shy about sharing them. Thanks a lot for your support. We uh, before we sign off, be sure to give this episode a like 
subscribe to my channel, hit that、uh, notification bell, and share it with anyone you think might dig it. All right, take care, and I will catch you all in the next episode. Goodbye.